Hello, everyone. I'm here to do a quick overview of security interests in land for real property for the California Bar Exam for essay portion, but this will also help you under MBEs. I am just going to go on through an approach for you guys. Uh, security interest are usually real property is often encumbered by a mortgage or other security interest. So usually it's a mortgage, but there's other type of security interest that I'll talk about too. So let me get my pointer on here. Okay, so real property is often encumbered by a mortgage or other security interest. So let's move on to our next slide. Mortgage, it's, there's a writing required, which is statute of frauds, of course, for a mortgage. The exception is equitable mortgage, um, the parole evidence rule. So if an equitable mortgage can occur, a buyer delivers a deed to the mortgagee, rather than signing a note or mortgage deed, parole evidence is allowed to show that this is what happens with the parties, and that's the intent of the parties. Um, the rights of the parties, the buyer, which is the mortgagor, has a right to title and possession of the property. The creditor, mortgagor, has a lien on property which grants foreclosure if necessary. We'll talk about all this. Foreclosure must be done in a judicial proceeding, and then we'll talk about the uh, types of foreclosure. For example, the senior mortgage, junior mortgages, and all of that, the PMMs. Priority of loans, here we go. So descending order of the priority of loans. This is a lot on MBEs. It'll give you like four different loans, and they wanna know how the money's gonna be dispersed after for foreclosure. Um, fees, of course, go first. If it's a purchase money, mortgage uh, that takes priority over all the other mortgages so and then senior mortgage pmm comes first if no pmm then it's going to be the senior senior mortgage first and the junior mortgage if the junior mortgage of course inquires in with the foreclosure procedures and unsecured interest so that's the order fees pmm or senior junior and then unsecured interest mortgage continued redemption they can always go back and redeem their mortgage and some people have statutory periods to redeem the payoff of the mortgage. Now, uh, when a mortgage is paid off, the property is redeemed from the mortgage. This equitable redemption is allowed before foreclosure sale. Some states have statutory redemption. They'll give them a certain time period, allowing the mortgage or a fixed period of time after foreclosure to redeem or pay off the mortgage. Get a couple questions on that, not too many. Conveyance by deed, it must be lawfully executed and delivered. This is the most important thing here. But when you're doing MBEs, know that your deed must be executed and properly delivered. And I have a deed, uh, actual deed video that tells you all the requirements of the deed and goes further into execution and delivery, okay? But lots of MBEs on that. The requirements are the ID of the parties, in writing, signed by grantor, witnessed or notarized, adequate description of property. Now, adequate description of property, we get a lot of MBEs on that too, where they're missing major things on the property, description of the property. Um, the words of intent, like I grant this over to so-and-so. No consideration is required. It may be interviewless gift. Okay, so these are all the requirements for conveyance of a deed. Remember, it has to be fully executed and delivered for it to be, to be passed. Lawfully executed and properly delivered. And I do go more into those, I said in, uh, like I said, inside of, on my um, deed video, which you can find on at PLC Homeschool. Okay. So that's for the conveyance of the deed. Now there's three types of deed. There's a quick claim deed. A quick claim deed conveys whatever interest the grantor actually has in the property, but it has no covenants of warranty or covenants of title. And we do get some quick claim MBEs. There's no covenants of title. Now a general warranty deed which is right here, has six covenants of title. Three are present and three are future, and you should know those. Okay, six covenants of title. Three are present, three are future. The three present covenants are breached at the time of the sale. Very important. The three present covenants are breached at the time of a sale. Okay, there's season, right to convey, and against encumbrances. And the three future run with the land are continuous are and are breached if ever at the time the grantee is disturbed in possession. So disturbance of possession, like warranty of title, um, grantor promises to defend should there be any lawful claims of title. We get a lot of that on MBEs, the lawful claims of title. If they have to go to court on it, then obviously that um, is a breach of, of a warranty of title there. Uh, quiet enjoyment and further assurances, and you guys can look those up, but the future covenants are warranty of title, most important, quiet enjoyment and further insurance assurances. Then there's a special warranty, 
special warranty deed, some states enforce promises by statute where the grantor promises on behalf of himself only that he hasn't conveyed the property to others and that the estate is free from encumbrances. So hasn't conveyed the property to others and free from encumbrances. So three types of title, quick claim, get whatever you get at that time, general warranty deed and special warranty deed. There's three present and three future. And the six covenants of title, you have to know the three present and three future and usually write them all up on your essay. Okay, so those are the types. Delivery of the deed. Let's talk about how we deliver this deed. A deed must be, like I talked about before, properly delivered and accepted to have effect. Delivery of requirements, intent of the present transfer, transfer. The following indicate this. So we need intent. Intent of present transfer. The following indicate this. A recording of the deed. That's an intent. Showing intent. Grantor physically delivered the deed to the grantee. That's also showing intent. We get a lot of MBs on this intent, on intent. If they, uh, some of the times they say, they'll say like a mother w intends to grant her son, her, her property, Black Acre, uh, but intends to do this when he turns 21 and he's only 18. So the intent is not fully there. And he goes in, he takes it from her drawer and records it. Well, the intent wasn't there. So the only way you can fight that is saying that the intent, the actual intent was to Give it to him when he was 21 he was only 18 and then you go from there okay so those are there's a lot of mbs on that acceptance must occur by grantee now the acceptance is important too if the grantee rejects it then that defeats the delivery they consider that not delivered so if you go hand it to the grantor hands it to the grantee and he doesn't want it or says no thank you it's not a delivery okay so that defeats it and they must accept it must occur by the grantee the acceptance okay so that's important too and title passes immediately to the grantee, to the buyer, upon proper delivery, thus is not revocable. And I had this all on my um, deed lecture. So upon delivery, thus is not revocable. You know that too. Merger doctrine, see other lectures. So merger doctrine, basically it's on my other lecture for the deed too. But basically, okay, the... Once the property full, first of all, we're using the contract. And the contract is the, is the document that we're using until proper closing. And once it properly closes, then it, the contract is merged into the deed. And the deed becomes the operative document governing the transaction at that time. So it goes from contract to the deed. And whatever is in the deed is, a, is governing the transaction at that time. And you guys can see that on my other lecture, my um, commands by deed. That's pretty much the gist of the murder doctrine, though. Damages if the covenant is breached. So title issues. Damages awarded equal lesser the the damages awarded are lesser the purchase price or the cost to defend the title. Encumbrances lesser of the difference between the amount paid and the value of the land or the cost of removing the encumbrance. Okay. So these are just the damages, and if you wanted to, if we we do have to put these on our essay. Okay, the damages, so that's at the end if it's covenant, if the covenant is breached. I don't know what happened. There we go. Okay, devised by will. This is important. Property may conveyed by may be conveyed by will, and mostly you're going to use your will's actual lecture for this. Um, the several is issues that can occur or arise during the division by will is redemption, exoneration, and lapse, and anti-lapse, and I've seen these. And these are, we always have to write up on an essay. I've seen tons of essays on these. So redemption is the testator divides a specific property to a specific person, and then when he dies, the property is no longer available, okay? So it is a deemed, which means it fails, and the legatee gets nothing. So this is the testator, the one making the will, gives a certain property, Black Acre, to Mary, let's just say and Mary dies before the testator. Uh, it is considered a deemed, and the legatee gets nothing. That's what it is, okay? Ademption, wait a second, let me do this. Devise a specific, okay. The property's no longer available, I'm sorry. So, okay. See, I get ademption, exoneration, mixed up. Let's do it again. So testator, devises a specific property to Mary, so Black Acre to Mary, testator dies, 
and the property is no longer available. He sold Black Acre to someone else, okay? The property is no longer available. That's when it is a deemed and Mary gets nothing, okay? So that's what happens there. Now exoneration, person receives a bequest or a gift and there's a subject and it's subject, so there is a lien or a mortgage on the encumbrance, so there's an encumbrance on this gift or bequest. It's paid off with the estate money and he receives it free and clear of the encumbrance. That's exoneration. Lapse and anti-lapse. If a beneficiary dies before the testator, then their gift lapse. And that's if there's not an anti-lapse statute. It lapses. Okay, lapses means it's gone, no one gets it. Or it's, it's the person just, he died, doesn't get the gift. Okay, but if it's an anti-lapse statute, then it's going to go to the beneficiary's heirs or next of kin. So after the beneficiary dies, it is still gonna to go to the heirs or the next of kin. If the beneficiary lives in a state where there's no anti-lapse, there's only a lapse statute, uh, the heirs or the kin are not getting anything. Okay, so that's lapse and anti-lapse, and I've seen this, and I believe California is an anti-lapse statute. You'll see all of this in wills a little bit more deeper too. Recording acts, these are very important. These are tons of MBEs that I read. Um, recording acts are to ensure that the buyer is getting good title. It only protects BFPs and mortgagers. And by this time in our law school, since we're starting with the bar exam, we should know what a BFP is. Okay, it only protects BFPs and mortgagers. And they're gonna try to say, here we go, does not protect donees, heirs, and devisees because they do not take for value and a BFP does take for value, okay? Very important on that one. Only protect subsequent grantees, never the first grantee, apply to every instrument, okay? You're gonna apply this recording act to every instrument, interest in land, so in every instrument or an interest in land. So a conveyance we're gonna apply these to, a mortgage, a life estate, restrictive covenants, which I have a lecture on also, easements, which I have a lecture on, but all of these are going to apply and the recording act Recording acts need to be brought up. Okay, remember it only protects BFPs and mortgagers. It doesn't protect donees, heirs, and devisees. The rules for the recording acts. Common law, we all know the common law one, first in time, first in right. So if it does not have an actual recording act on your essay, it's first in time, first in right. But I, and if it doesn't have any MBE, it's first in time, first in right. And they'll give you a, a recording act and I'll tell you what they'll say. So there's, peer, there's three of them, peer race statutes, peer notice statutes, and race notice statutes. Peer race, peer notice, and race notice. Peer race means the first to record wins. Okay, this statute rewards the winner of the race to the recorder's office. So first to record wins. Peer notice statutes, BFP prevails over grantee who didn't record. So a subsequent bona fide purchaser prevails over the grantee that didn't record. So if the BFP, there's a BFP and another grantee and the grantee did not record, that bona fide purchaser prevails, okay? Now this is very important. This comes out on our MBEs all the time. You just gotta memorize which one goes with which. And I don't memorize, I try not to memorize too much, but this I do. I'm not very good at this yet, so I always have to look at my cheat sheet though. No conveyance or mortgage of real property shall be good against subsequent purchases for value and without notice unless the same be recorded. Now, if you have this on your MBE, this is going to be a peer notice statute. So the BFP prevails over the grantee who didn't record. Now for the race notice, it's different. Race notice statutes, BFP that records first prevails over a grantee that didn't record first, okay? Records first. So if there's another BFP and they're recorded, no. The worst one who records first, and that usually says, That usually says no conveyance or mortgage of real property shall be good against subsequent purchasers for value and without notice who shall record first. So we do have to memorize this. And we have to remember that this goes with race notice and this one goes with peer notice. Those are MBs and they show, they say those exact wordings. And I get them confused all the time, but the more I practice, the better I get at them. So that's the rules for the that is the rules for the recording acts, and there's three of them. And usually you have to write on all three of them, including the common law. 
Now we're going to go to notice. Did they have notice? You notice all those recording acts had some form of notice in there. Some of them did some. We have to write it up. Notice, I remember, as air, actual, inquiry, and record notice. Actual, buyer has actual notice of a prior unrecorded interest. Inquiry, went to see the land. Reasonable person to do further inquiry. Saw, I don't know, saw a driveway coming from the middle of their grass to the highway, something like that. They saw it. They were there on the land. They should have inquired more. They had notice, basically. Record or constructive notice, they usually call it constructive notice or record notice. That means it's in the chain of title or the index. Now, the exception with this is wild deeds. I haven't seen this, but I do have it in the lecture. Is recorded, but not in a way that a reasonable search of index would disclose. So it's really not, you can't go, a reasonable person cannot go to this. It's not in the index, it's not fair. They do not provide constructive notice. So there's no constructive notice on a wild deed because it's not where you can just find it on an index, like a regular recorded constructive chain of title issue up here. Three types of notices, air, actual inquiry and record. Chain of title issues, a stop by deed is not owned at first, but later acquires and still automatically transfers to the grantee. This does not apply to quick claim deed. So stop by deed, they don't own it at first. You see lots of MBEs, but later acquire it. Then that person who they give, they sold or conveyed or gave a deed to, um, automatically transfers to that person, even though they didn't have it at the beginning, they're gonna try to get it back, they can't. This does not apply to quick claim deeds, okay? Shelter doctrine, BFP will stand in the shoes of the BFP, so. That's that one, I'm trying to go a little quicker here. Oh, that's it, shelter doctrine. Yeah, that's about it. So let's go ahead and go back and do our. So let's go ahead and do, actually that would have been good to do a slide of real quick of what we're gonna write up for our issues. I'm, okay, so an approach. This is the approach that we would do first. Okay, so the approach for security interest in land, give you a little rule, real property usually has one, an encumbrance or something. I'm sorry, get our rule. After that, we're going to talk about mortgages as if there is one with all the mortgage issues. After that, we're gonna talk about the deed if there is one the types of deed there, all of that stuff. Then we're gonna talk about the delivery, is there actual delivery and all of that stuff for that. Uh, merger doctrine on the deed also. And then we'll talk about a will, if there's a division by will. And then we'll go to the recording acts, talk about all the different recording acts. After that, we're gonna throw in there, are there any chain of title issues? And that's the Shelley doctrine, the shelter doctrine or the estoppel by deed, okay? And then you give your conclusion of how that's going to happen. So rule, mortgage, deed, these are all questionable. If we're talking about a mortgage, if we're talking about a deed, if we're talking about a will, okay, but we do always do the recording acts here. And then chain of title issues, the shelter doctor, or stop by deed if it's, if we need to, and then the conclusion. So that's your approach. Okay, I got to make this quick and short, so thank you so much, and I'll be doing my next video uh, for real property on, what are we doing next? Estates and land, freehold states, and future interest, present interest, all of that. Okay, thank you.